and furniture, musical instruments, functional art, beautiful decoration. These pieces, and others like them, are crafted in wood by master woodworkers who live here in Santa Cruz County and on the Central Coast. In this series, we meet some of these craftsmen and explore the paths they took to develop their talents. We will look at examples of their work. We will discover what and who inspired them. Please join us as we enter their workshops and watch them demonstrate the skills and the techniques they use in creating their signature pieces. Hello and welcome to Woodworks. My name is John Hall and today I'm joined by one of our old friends from the Santa Cruz Woodworkers, Ron Cook. Morning Ron. Good morning John. Last month we talked about how to organise a workshop, safety in the workshop, what important tools to go out and buy to start with and what types of wood to use. Today we're going to jump straight into making something from start to finish. The project today is how to make a table, a trestle table. We chose this because it's not a too complicated a project to start with. The end product can be useful inside or outside the house or even in the workshop but most importantly the techniques that you'll be learning are techniques that will be useful to you with pretty much any project that you'll be doing after this. So let's get started. Hand and power tools can be dangerous. Be safe in the shop. Always wear appropriate safety equipment including safety glasses or shields and ear and lung protection. Never put your hands anywhere near a moving blade. Use a push stick to push materials into the cutting area. Use gloves to protect hands from splinters when handling wood but do not wear them near rotating blades. And never remove or disconnect safety devices. Step 1. Understand the plan. What should the first time woodworker be, be looking at here um, and what's important for them to understand as they look at this plan? Well, main, the first thing really is the size of it, uh, the length of the pieces. There's a, a, usually a materials list. The uh, materials list will give you uh, a listing of all the pieces and uh, hardware that's needed for uh, the project. Uh, Usually when you buy pieces of, of wood, uh, you're getting certain lengths, uh, longer lengths than you'll need. Uh, so you have to keep, keep that in consideration mm -hmm. uh, because you will be cu cutting everything to length. Mm -hmm. so let's take a look at these measurements, Ron. So for the, the trestle feet, on the materials list it says 1 by 4 by 23. When I look at the measurements here, it's not 4 inches, it's 3 and a half. What's, what's the, why is there a difference there? The difference is uh, dimensioned wood, when you buy it at a lumber yard, is usually a half inch to almost five eighths of an inch uh, narrower. Uh, a, a four inch wide piece of surfaced wood is actually three and three eighths to three and a half inches, uh, depending on the lumber yard you buy it from. The dimensions on the plan are the actual dimensions of the, the project? Yes, yes. Right. So let's get started and the first thing we'll do is cut the material to the lengths we need. Step 2. Cut material to length. Well, I'm going to cut this to length. Uh, first thing to do is to take a measurement. Uh, all these stretches are 23 inches long so I'll mark a little for 23 inches. Use a square I'm going to use a handsaw for this one and you don't want to use a, a, a saw that has large teeth. You want to have uh, almost like a finished saw so that you don't cut, uh, you don't splinter the wood as you cut it. Step 3 Mortise, braces, and feet. Well, the first thing I have to do is uh, lay out the center of our stretcher piece here and mark for where this is going to be set in. 
so it's a uh, slight mortise here. Now this piece of wood is not three and a half inches, it's three and three eighths. So we need to first find the center. 23 inches, it's 11 and a half. So I'll mark the center. You can mark it here because this is going to be cut out. That's your center. Now normally three and a half inches, half of that is one and three quarters, but you need to go a sixteenth less. So normally it'd be one and three quarters, sixteenth less. Right there. One and three quarters, sixteenth less. Right there. Now that is three and three eighths inches. I'm marking here just down a little bit so I can eyeball this with the blade. Two of these are going to go together like this. This will be cut out like this too. It'll be cut out also. And when these are put together at again one and three eighths inch, this is almost an inch and a half but not quite. So we'll set the blade down to three-eighths of an inch. Now you can use a blade, just single blade, and make several passes through it, or you can use a uh, dado blade, three-quarter inch wide dado blade, and make the cuts just with a couple of passes. Now see I cut both sides first and I'll just run the blades through several times to uh, make it easy to, to uh, remove with the chisel. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Step four: Make leg tenons. All right. Actually, what we can do? Put it in there, flush like that. You can mark where the tenon goes. Tenons, again, will be three-eighths of an inch deep, so we have about a three-quarter inch tenon on it. Uh, we'll cut it with a table saw across there, but we can, uh, actually, you can cut the notch in a table saw, and if you want to measure it across here for where it's going to be, we could use the band saw, uh, or do like we did with the other uh, cross member cut several pieces on it and chisel it out. 
Then we have the blade still set at 3 eighths of an inch, uh, just like we did before with the other pieces. So we'll notch these. Now this is a demonstration of how to use the bandsaw to cut the, uh, rip the length of the tenon here. I have the a fence set up at three eighths of an inch. So I'll turn this on and cut a piece off of this. And the bandsaw gives a nice, cut, nice, even cut, so you don't have to do any chiseling. Step five: screw feet together. I'm going to start with a, a little, do a dry fit, and then we'll get prepare to drill for some pilot holes for the screws and glue these together. Now these are going to be shaped for feet and a little bit of a decoration up here for the top. So we want to make sure that uh, we lay out four, four areas for drilling for the screws that aren't going to be where you're going to be cutting. For each end. five inches for another screw from each end. You don't want to drill all the way through so what I do is make sure the bit only goes about halfway through the second board and I put a piece of tape on there so I know how far to go in. If you're using a drill press you can set a stop on the drill press to do the same thing but on this you need to uh, make sure you don't drill too far and I want to make sure that these are lined up properly that they're squared off so I'm going to clamp it here to hold it in place Same thing with this end. And the idea for pilot holes is so that the screws won't uh, split the wood. Now because we're using flathead screws, I'm going to uh, have a special taper bit to uh, count make a countersink for the screw heads. It is a good idea to mark them, um, especially if you're going to, one's the top and one's the bottom. Now if this is for outdoor use, a waterproof glue is, uh, is the way to go with it. If it's, if you're making, using better uh, hardwood or a different kind of wood than it's going into the house, you could be using uh, a, uh, a regular yellow, yellow glue.